meeting is okay. being recorded. All right, great. Um, thank you, everybody. It's uh, September 12th. Uh, apologies to those in the attendees who uh, joined on Monday and we were not able to get quorum. Uh, we do have quorum today, so we'll have our regular meeting as uh, as planned. Uh, I guess to begin, uh, can we get a minute taker for today? Right, Matt, I love you. <laughs> All right. First order of business uh, will be the meeting minutes from or from the August meeting, which uh, Matt sat, sent out on the 28th. Um, can I get a motion to approve those minutes? All right, Jonas, Chris, I think I saw your hand up as a second. Yep. All right, uh, any discussion um, relative to the minutes? Okay, then um, let's just do uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. It's four nothing. Um, passes unanimously. Okay, let me get the uh, agenda page back. Um, all right, uh, any, let's see, we've got the public on. I know we've got pickleball slotted as the first item. So maybe we just jump into pickleball first and then I'll go to public comment just in case. Uh, um, do you want to do public comment first? Well, I suspect the public comment will probably be related to the pickleball. Uh, but yeah, we can go ahead and do that. Anybody, if um, if you have a comment that's not related to one of the items on the agenda tonight, which are pickleball, CPA proposals, an aquatics update, youth empowerment programming. Um, if you have a comment in any of those, just raise your hand and Ray will let you in. All right, I do yeah. see one hand I up. Have one hand up. All right, uh, Kathleen. Oh, you have the same. I I, I can you see have, the, the notifications. I, oh, I'm sorry, but I can't I can't bring her over though. Okay. Uh, do you so mind? then I will let, we have one hand raised right now, Kathleen Carroll. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, um, I have a comment on pickleball. Should I wait for Ray to talk about pickleball? Yeah, that would be great. We'll go through the, the presentation and then we'll, we'll get any questions from the public uh, at that time. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, I think that's it, Ray. Why don't you go ahead and get, get started? Okay. Um, uh, I gave a little bit of a brief uh, the other night, but I did just want to say that um, I was uh, a short time ago, like another step in the process of, I think, pickleball trying to uh, have a trying to build in their own sort of temporary home at Mill River. We've done a bunch of from the beginning of this process, we've done some accommodating to try and to try and provide as much given our limited resources as much to the pickleball uh, game in Amherst as we can. And so there was it was brought to my attention, it was requested that we we cover pickleball, I brought it to the commission's attention and said, uh, we'd like to put pickleball on the agenda here. Just as a recap, uh, uh, we have recently uh, responded. There were three primary uh, uh, considerations that we were asked of. Uh, one was that we leave uh, nets. We leave the temporary nets out at Mill River uh, on a regular basis. Uh, uh, that was not, that it wasn't an easy yes. <clears throat> But uh, as a department and with a little bit of nudging from Town Hall, who's been uh, supportive of that push, we were able to accept some of the risk of putting out uh, nets. It wasn't as simple. I think one of the things that uh, the community thought, because I know I communicated before about the risk of having nets out, which is still a concern for us because we don't have attendance on the park and we don't have operation. We've, we have had theft and damage of other equipment in other spaces in town for things that we have left out. Um, and so there is some risk in doing that. But for, for us, the bigger concern was, uh, a bigger concern for us was the, the issue of, of, uh, uh, no, we had a finite resource and we need to make sure that we had nets here where we are monetizing lessons and open play through the winter time, uh, through the fall and winter time here at the middle school. 
And so, and so uh, it wasn't just about the risk of the nets that we leave out there, but it was also the, the fact that we only have so many nets and we couldn't move it back and forth between being out there and coming over to the middle school. And we had to put those in, but we, we do uh, thanks, thanks in large part to the, uh, to the, to the accumulating of resources that uh, has been the gift that keeps on giving from ARPA and our, our, uh, uh, furnishing some of our, our sports lending libraries and our equipment libraries, we were able to get enough nets that we could do both. And so I can take, I can take the risk that it takes to put out there. Uh, but we did, we did make the adjustment to leave nets out there. If you drive by there, I hope they were here. They were there earlier when I drove by. Uh, if you go out there, there are two, uh, you know, basic temporary nets, uh, standard temporary nets on on the courts that can be moved onto the lines and off the lines when when they're done playing. Um, those two, but, I'm sorry, quick question. How much how much do those nets cost? You know, these cost a hundred dollars. Okay. These nets were a hundred dollar nets. All right, and then this may be a better one to get from our pickleballers when we open up the lines. But is it like just standard protocol when you play to put to to pack the nets up when you're done um if there's nobody waiting for you or or is it like a, the last person at sunset puts them away it, no it oh for us right now no, it's we, just amongst the community since it's not staffed you know, I'm just wondering if someone for plays us, it for us leave. the courtesy is to when you're done playing to move it back over to the fence line um would be our ideal sort of courtesy rules out there. So tennis players don't have to move it. Right. It's not really hard to move. Two people can move it with ease. I drag it by myself. Um, uh, you know, in terms of what is standard, standard is, is different in different places, but for most places that do have a committed pickleball uh, board, they have they have nets like tennis has nets and yeah. and people don't have to worry about moving them to and from that you don't have to worry about uh you don't have to worry about about temporary placement of nets because there are pickleball nets that are set in place and so we are in that in that sort of partial nomad space uh the, our semi-nomadic uh operation there is that we have to be able to break that down when we're done and so that's that's basically a the the courtesy that we would that we would be looking for is that those nets get put out of place so it doesn't encourage people to sort of mishandle and mistreat them as they're trying to kick them out or whatever and um, then so it's just uh when will we will we bring them back in for the season or are they going to stay out 12 months a year so the third question, the third thing that they asked for, I'll get back to the second one. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. I think it's the easiest one. The third thing that they asked about was about uh, extending the season. DPW has typically found a date, and it's and it's a it's a weather related date, but they've typically typically found a date when it was exclusively tennis, especially when it becomes too much to try and come in, when the ice comes, when the when the ground freezes over, when the weather is, sometimes it was earlier because blowing the leaves becomes, it becomes a maintenance issue for them. If there's not a lot of play, they'll chain the, they'll chain the doors and basically shut down the courts for a while. The request was that we look into extending the season into the cold season, into the winter season, because it, it is, even when it's cold out, which pickleball can be played in the cold, like basketball can be played in the cold, and tennis could be played in the cold, uh, when uh, when the uh, when it gets cold out, if there is some community buy-in to be able to, to be able to uh, uh, blow leaves and to take care of that court when they're not on there, the question is, can we can we extend that date? Um, Amy is here and Amy can verify. I, I did speak to Amy about this and uh, we we are in the in the works right now of trying to find a a, a manageable date later in the season. Uh, it, the, the locks aren't put on the on they aren't put on the fences to keep people out just to keep people out so so we can work on what an appropriate date would be to close up if it gets cold there's a lot of snow out there there comes a time where if there's a if there's a lot of snow and it and it melts and freezes over then there's not leaf blowers that can take care of those those cores but we can do that in a little bit more of a of a wait and see sort of approach to closing the courts okay 
And so that was the third thing. Second, second question that was presented to us was the the one that that the commission had already weighed in on and sort of sort of spoke about, spoke to when I brought it to their attention maybe a couple months ago. Um, and that is building an open play that's attached to having the courts out there. I mean, having the nets out there on the court, but it's building in the idea of open play, pickleball culture required, uh, um, having people available out on the courts to play means more than just for people that happen to have a portable net showing up to the court and saying, you know, you know, you know the four of us are going to go over there. And if the space is open, we're going to play there. We've set aside hours of the day, three days a week, Tuesday and Thursday and Saturday uh, uh, for a block of time where we, where if pickleball shows up, it is reserved for pickleball. Um, those, uh, 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 that time allows singletons. If I'm, if I want to go and play pickleball and I don't have a, a foursome that I already am built in and trying to go over to the court and play with the people I'm playing with, there could be, there could be, 15 to 20 people in the courts say and you can build in a weight system to allow people to get on and play some of them know each other some of them don't know each other but you get a chance to sort of uh, level uh, uh, assess assess your play get in and, and basically uh, who has next get in and play with house rules and and it allows the pickleball community to expand outside of the the people that they already know. It allows people to, to play a more dynamic game, uh, matching up with people that that maybe you don't know, or may, maybe that that have that have a varying level of experience. It allows you to challenge yourself. It certainly allows you to it allows larger crowds to share that experience at the same time. What what so, times on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday? Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays are ten to noon, and Saturdays are twelve to three, I believe. I don't have it in front of me, but. Okay. And then um, during those times, what if a tennis player shows up? Are uh, like, is, are those hours reserved exclusively for pickleball? I, I just, those... and I apologize because I know it wasn't on the last meeting and we've talked about yeah. this before, but um, I guess just could you remind me how, how we manage tennis and pickleball sharing that space? This has been happening. I actually could uh, could ask in in the in the uh, uh, in the uh, what's called the public comment if there's anybody that that would like to weigh in on how it's been about sharing that space in the week and a half that it's been going on. They can certainly use that in their in their three minute presentation. Um, but but it would be that that tennis court. There's there's a tennis court that is not lined for pickleball. Which, if pickleball, if that infringed on pickleball, I, I think we would have to see if that's a if that's an issue. I I, I believe that I, I, it hasn't come across that they're they're playing side by side here yet, um, but I don't know to what extent that that would be an issue for them. Okay, all right, cool. Um, okay, and then uh, just a quick follow up. Then on the third item, in terms of extending the season, um. Was Amy going to comment on that? Or I guess just before we go to public comment, I just, if we have answers to these, let's, let's get them out. Do we have a, anything in place to extend or a date in mind, Amy, or? No. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'm hoping to have more clarity. I just, uh, I was told about this a couple of days ago and just haven't seen Alan since then to talk about it with him um, to get his feedback. Um, but generally, normally what we do is at some point we kind of shut down the bathrooms, we winterize things, including um, the courts when we think that it's kind of a safety thing. And some of that, like Ray said, is, you know, blowing the leaves off it, but then some of it is ice. Um, I do think once we have ice on the courts, we're still going to need to close them for the season. But if there was some... Um, you know, interest uh, from the pickleball folks in trying to help uh, clear leaves off so that this season could be extended. Um, I, I can't see why our staff wouldn't be okay with that. But again, I want to confirm that with Alan before I can definitively say that. Okay. Awesome. All right, Ray, anything else on those three points from you? 
No, that is that is the response to the three that were that were brought to my attention. Like I said, some of it was already in the work. Some of it was uh, was added asked that are attached to which I agree with would make the would make the open play work a little bit better. Would make it work a little bit more thoroughly. So, um, okay. that is that is my update for for uh, pickleball at Mel. All right, uh, Jonas, Matt, Chris, any. Um... Any questions for Ray or comments before we go to public comment? I guess the only comment would be, I think you were on the, like a pickleball, the 12 to three open. Yes. If a tennis player comes and they see it's, like, there's probably gonna be, there's gonna be a sign of some sort letting people know. Yes. So like, I'm just imagining I'm a tennis player and I come 1230, I don't see anyone on the pickleball, just per hand, like just that day, no one's there, but they're gonna show up 10 minutes later. I guess wondering how that kind of scenario. That's where be. that's where our signage is. Yeah. It, for some reason, it was the signs we put out there the first day. I believe have been taken down. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know by who or for what reasons. Um, we are putting more signs out there to to. We have information on our website. Uh, I think. I think it's probably safe to assume that pickleballers view look for online information about pickleball at Mill River more than tennis players look at for online information about a tennis at Mill. Um, but but we will it, it's it has been posted on our social media. We are we are posting it. We're trying to make sure that word is out. It won't be anything that people know right away, and that's where signage helps us to make it a a common theme. Yeah, ideally the pickleballer can point to the sign. Look, yes. maybe worst case they can go to the website on their phone. Yes. Look, you know we have this time. Okay. Um, well, then let's open it back up to the public here. Kathleen, I see your hand is still up. Do you still have interest in making comment? Uh, yes. I'm Kathleen Carroll. I live on Fisher Street in Amherst, and I'd like to thank all of you for all that you've done for us um, this summer uh, at Mill River, making it our temporary home. Um, I think the response to the open play has been phenomenal. Our first uh, hour, we had five players there who not everybody knew anybody, not everybody knew each other. And it was just really nice that a single person could come in and play. Um, Today we had twice the amount of people come. So I think the response has been really phenomenal. I would like to um, comment on sharing the courts with the tennis players. I've been there um, when tennis players have come on and the pickleball community basically respects that this is their core and accommodates them and is ready to leave if they all come on and uh, they want the entire footprint. I've seen it both ways. Um, so I think uh, both communities are uh, playing together harmoniously. I didn't realize that the sign had been taken down, Ray. That's that's disturbing. Um, but um, yes, I think that that's worked out very well. I, I hope that you can consider um, keeping the uh, gate open as long as you can. I know that we have been maintaining the surfaces um, throughout the summer, bringing our leaf blowers and our brooms. In fact, you guys have a broom there and we use it. Um, so I think the community is willing to keep the surface uh, clean and playable. I have two other things I'd like to comment on. Um, one is I do think that the community is going to grow. People like it at Mill River. And I was wondering if there's any chance that we could um, uh, temp uh, tape temporary lines on the western end of the uh, north parking lot and have two more courts over there and use uh, traffic cones to um, close off the footprint when we're playing over there. And we would bring our own nets for at least for the winter if you decide to close up the court over there. And the fourth thing was, um, I wasn't part of this, but I understand there was a conversation with the commission about installing permanent uh, pickleball courts on the north lot 
at Mill River, and I would like, like to see if you could reopen that conversation. All right, thank you for those comments, Kathleen. I think the um, relative to the relocation to the north part, I know that was something that came through the CPA, and I, Amy, you could probably, or Ray could probably comment, comment on it better, but I think that that was, uh, that location was ruled out. Um, I know there are some concerns around proximity to residents, and um, that has been the the greatest challenge of trying to find a permanent home is getting okay. a location that's within that's more than 500 feet away, which which was a number I think that I was quoted last time that I heard. Can I just comment on the noise? Uh, the industry is working very hard to create a, a quiet ball. And I, so I really do believe in within a year, uh, the amount of noise from the ball is going to be greatly reduced. So I just wanted to add that. Very good. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. And we've, we've, I know I've heard that as well. So um, Kathleen, thank you for those comments. Um, Ray, um, I guess Ray or Amy, any, any thoughts relative to um, some temporary lines? I, I more just wanted to speak a little bit to at least the conversation about using that parking lot. And certainly it's it's one that it can be revisited again. Um, but at least as we were looking at it, it's hard that Mill River is used for a lot of things. You have, you know, the pools, you've got the baseball fields, you've got a lot of things. And so, you know, there are, there are often times that all of the parking is used. And so, you know, I think some of the rationale of not wanting to put it right there was really you'd be taking away about 18 parking spots and adding uses for about, you know, 12 more people at any given time. And so, you know, just kind of looking um, especially since Mill River, you can't have any overflow parking on Montague Road, as opposed to, you know, other parks in the town where you maybe could parallel park out on the road if there wasn't enough parking. Um, so Mill River, we just have to kind of look at all the different users, you know, the people that come to enjoy the pavilion and the playground or um, the the trails and the river and all of that. And so um, certainly open to, to conversations if there are maybe times that the parking area is isn't as heavily used and maybe that might that might be a possibility for something um you know temporary in the meantime thanks amy um we've got kathy shane next ray do you could you let kathy over good evening kathy shane hi i i'm kathy shane i am thank you Andrew for figuring out how to say my last name. Um, I'm speaking as a North Amherst resident, not, but I am also the district council me member for the North. So I just wanna to speak to Amy, you're talking about 18 spaces. I'm not sure whether that's measured with just two courts. I know the original request was for more, but since um, the concern about parking was initially raised, the North Amherst Library just added 25 spaces and they're never used. I mean, they're never full. So we have actually space across the way um, that didn't exist. And the uh, noise has not led to any complaints. We're playing on those courts right now. Um, and today, Kath Kathy actually understated how many people were there. We had we had well over 12 people. So four to, four to five were switching in and out over a period of time. Um, so it's it's a sport that if anything, the um, use is growing and the use of spaces is not, we don't have spaces. So the virtue of that lot, which was why it was originally proposed is there's already pavement there and you don't have to dig it up. You don't have to dig up grass. You're not creating a new drainage problem. It's not great pavement. So we probably have to even it out. So I, I just wanna make I, Amy, quietly said, maybe it could be revisited. I realized that that was not a, it can be revisited, but to be thinking about it, because I think not having to pave over grass is a big virtue of that. The, the other thing about the tennis and pickleball, I am also a tennis player. And we've managed to have 
two public courts. That's all we've got because the middle school courts are there, but they're not always available that have a crack on every line. Not, I'm not kidding. And the nets, like you can't see my hands, but the nets, and I know they're due to be repaved, Amy. <laughs> you know, <they're, laughs> I was going to say, we do have CPA funds to this year to, to fix that. And so, um, yeah, I more just want to, we're aware of that and, and we're really excited to actually, um, do those improvements for you guys and, for, and for, for all and, the users of those courts. And I was was going to suggest, Amy, and I just write a note to DPW is take a look at what Amherst College has done and where the nets are for the tennis courts. They leave a dirt space all along under the net. So the two posts that support the net are in the dirt rather than in the court. Because one of the things that's been happening in our court is the posts are pulling up the asphalt uh, on them and then the nets are down and we can't crank the nets up. At least we're not holding them up with a board anymore, which is how we were holding the nets up. <laughs> so so, so the, the lesser use for tennis is in part because the tennis courts are horrible to play on. We go down and play at Amherst College. We don't go, and I live in North Amherst, or we go play at Hampshire. So I think there's potential competition if these tennis courts were decent tennis courts, right now it's it's working really well. So I just wanted to make a point because Mill River is an unbelievable recreational area. And um, there was some concern about, there's a group of men that like to play backgammon and they play where the parking spaces are, Amy. They never have to move that. And I went and I asked them, what would they think if there were some courts there? And they said, well, we've just moved our table onto the grass. And we really like that game. We've been watching it. It's cool. You know, so <laughs> there was some concern of they've been playing there for years. And I've lived in the north. So I just want to see if it could be reopened. That would be great. Um, you know, if the town could ever arrange with Hampshire College to give Amherst residents access to their outdoor courts, they have uh, all summer long, they were wide open. So that would be the other way of, of creating some public and, and we could pay a fee um, to, to them. So if there's not a willingness to build them, maybe we can arrange um, for a small membership fee that people would pay. So that's my parting thought, just because it is, it's, it's pretty amazing how many people are playing it right now. Thank you. Very good. Thank, thank you for the comment. Um, we've got Judy with her hand up. Uh, Ray, could you let Judy in, please? Yes. Good evening, Hello, Judy. Judy. Now, can you hear me? Yes. yes okay. Um, first, I wanted to say about the signage at Mill River. I was there today, and there was the sign on the fence about open play and what time it is. And I've been there at least for three open plays and I've always seen the sign. So okay. I don't know uh, anything about it having been taken down. Um, but yeah, that, that would go a long ways for anybody who's confused about why pickleballers are on the tennis court. Um, also, I've been there when tennis players have been playing and pickleballers and it has worked quite well because it's just one tennis court that is used for two pickleball courts. And then the other one, tennis players use. So, so far, I mean, maybe it'll become a little more contentious as there's more people. I don't know. But so far, so far, so good as far as that goes. Um, I'm all for extending the season for as much as possible. I do not like playing pickleball indoors, although there are some options there. And I have played almost year round. You can play when it's above freezing. So in the 40s is wonderful pickleball weather. But it has to be safe. So if it's too hard to keep the, the courts free of snow and ice, you know, that's that's gotta be the consideration. And finally, I have played with quiet pickleballs and they are amazing. You can't hear them at all. That crack, crack, crack that drives people crazy. It's 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 quiet. And people who have tried it say, this is really weird. They like the feedback from the crack of the, but otherwise I think they're wonderful. More people should use them. It is an option. So I think that's all I was gonna say. Thank you. Thanks for all you've done, given us opportunities to play at Mill River. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Thank you Judy. Um, a new hand showed up, uh, Marion 
Hoffman looks like. Uh, Ray, oh, could you oh, work your magic? Yes. Hello, Marion Hoffman. Hi there. Um, I'm Marion Hoffman, and um, I have a Team Reach um, site. And just to speak to how popular this sport is, before we had open play in our Team Reach sport, uh, we had about 20 members. And as soon as people realized that we were going to institute open play, we're up to 78 members. So this is really quite uh, impressive in terms of how many people are, are interested in this sport and would like to continue playing. Excellent, yeah, um, staggering numbers and kind of consistent with what I certainly read, the, the growth is meteoric. Thank you for the comment. Uh, let's see, anybody else from the uh, attendees? Oh, Ellen, Ellen Lindsay. Good evening. Hi there. Hi, Hi Andy, Hi, Matt. Um, Hi, everyone else I've met or haven't met. Um, my name is Ellen Lindsay. I live in South Amherst, but play up at Mill River um, in the summer. I'm with a group that uh, plays usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings from 8 to 9.30. And we bring our leaf blowers and clean the courts, bring our portable nets, and have been doing it all summer. I don't know if anybody else in my group is on this call, but just want to emphasize how much we enjoy playing up there. A lot of us belong to Bay Road and play there in the winter. But in summer, we like being up at Mill River. And um, if there's any way to line the second court, because when we're playing, nobody seems to be on the tennis court, maybe once every other week for you know part of the time we're there. But um, it would be great to have that because we have more people who like to play with us. And we have a nice set of lawn chairs set up in the shade. All the people are waiting to rotate in. So adding two more courts up there would be fantastic if that uh, north parking lot could be used for tennis courts, which are quieter at this point, that's great. And then we would just take over both of those um, current tennis courts as pickleball courts. So I think there is some way to make it so more people can play. The sport is growing, as you know, and it's not going to go away, we hope. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thanks, Ellen. All right. Looks like that is it for pub up. Wait, Judy's hand just went back up. Quick follow-up, Judy. Uh, yeah, I just wondered uh, to follow up on Ellen's point. Has there been any objection to putting pickleball lines on the other tennis court? Or could we just do that? Or, you know, the town just do that and provide two more nets? Ray or Amy, you want to comment on that? Uh, to, I can answer the question uh, directly. We haven't had anybody tell us no because it hasn't really. Come, I, I, I was going to, I was going to sort of wrap uh, uh, you know, my last comments on this. We're going to, we're going to basically be to inform uh, the commission and the people of of Amherst here that uh, from the very beginning, one of my jobs as director here, and maybe it was, maybe it has been uh, overzealous in in some ways. I, I'm cautious about being overzealous, but I've I've been very careful not to uh, because because I know that we we opened up uh, this this overlap of of sports passions. Um, I've been very careful not to let my my interest and ambition to try and to try and give enough of a seed for pickleball there at Mill River, run tennis out of of the, of the space. I've been I've been and vice versa, not letting our 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 guarding what we like so much and what has been a big part of us keep us from trying to open up new possibilities there. And so at times, uh, uh, I, I feel like I've been, I, I, I certainly have been zealous, overzealous or not, but I've been zealous in trying to keep those two energies from, from pointing at each other and, 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 uh, you know, basically encouraging people to, to, uh, 
uh, uh, to protect and defend what they have by attacking what what potentially is a threat. In that space here, uh, I haven't brought up the idea of pinning that second court partially because uh, early on, I just wanted to make sure that we had enough space. Uh, I want to make sure that we had enough space for tennis not to get run out of that space that at any point in time that they'd be able to show up and there would be a tennis court for them. Um, and so that was the first reason why we looked at, at one court. Now, the reason was cost because it did cost us money. Thankfully, we had people in-house uh, who were able to uh, who were able to paint and and make those lines work for the first trial run, and then we fixed some of the the line issues for the second trial run. Um, it has recently come back to to the forefront for us. We have been we've started to have that conversation about whether or not the second the second court could be painted over. There is there are other concerns now that we are that we're looking at and weighing. We might have made that decision, put it to the forefront already. If it weren't for the fact that we have to get over some some hurdles, namely about the uh, the the tennis the 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 court uh, refurbishing, but we have to make sure that as we move forward that we know what we're going to do on those courts. And so so when we get to that point where we have to worry about the 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 uh, uh, Mill River tennis courts and the lines that are on there, lining them now before we before we fix them. Uh, um, uh, Kathy Shane and Amy Rizeki both have sort of mentioned about the CPA and the and the interest in, in sort of upgrading those courts. Uh, when we end up looking at that, that question will come in for us as to the viability of putting a second second set of lines down. All right, that's a good answer. Thanks, Ray. Um, okay. Any other parting thoughts on pickleball? Okay, and looks like next item on the agenda will be CPA proposals. Ray and Amy. Ray, I don't know if you want me to kind of talk a little bit or if you want to present or. I hate the sound of my voice. So if you want to take over, I'll. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, and I I share these kind of with the the idea that I I feel like most years the town staff is a little behind the eight ball, and so we're always pulling together proposals, and we always list the recreation commission as like a group that's supporting these proposals. And we thought, wouldn't it be novel to be able to actually talk to you guys about them before we list you guys as a partner? <laughs> um, so really, um, you know, I'm at least going to share a little bit of some of the projects that we're looking at and um, with the intent of, you know, we'd love to hear feedback or if there's projects that we don't have on our list that we should be thinking about. Um, CPA proposals are due at the end of the month. And so, you know, we we don't have a lot of time to pull things together. Um, but, you know, the reality is there are several things that we'd like to, to move forward. So, um, the a couple of the the I guess the bigger not even bigger ones the the ones that we're looking at for this year um, there's some stuff at Groff Park that we're looking to do um, both kind of dealing with ADA accessibility and sidewalks um, so one of them is um, that lower pavilion I believe CPA actually funded. Um, improvements to the lower pavilion a couple of years ago, but without it being ADA accessible, it's kind of been held up in the process. So we do want to, um, at this point, it's really looking at trying to design, like get someone um, on board to design and permit because we're so close to the river that there's gonna be a quite the permitting hurdle. Um, but we wanna look at the ADA accessibility down to that lower pavilion at Groff. Um, and then the other one is that a sidewalk to come in from, from Mill down to the Groff Park proper, like from the road. So kind of paralleling the driveway on the way in. Um, and again, right now, um, unless you park in one of those two handicap spaces, you're either walking over grass or there's not really a handicap accessible um, way to get into, um, into the park to get to the splash pad and the playground and all of that area. 
Um, so Ray, I don't know if you want to add anything on that, but the, those two, as I was talking to it, the engineers today about them, we're probably going to bundle them together because both of them have some pretty, pretty hefty permitting hurdles that we're going to have to do. And so probably this year, we're looking more at the permitting and design to move those forward so that next year, hopefully we can construct. Ray, anything to add on those? I would, uh, the one part that I would add to that is that uh, the, the, the issue about about ADA uh, um, um, uh, um, rebuilding the ADA access down there, it has come up with every project we've tried to cite out of Groff. Anything that anything that comes up down there, doing any work down in that lower pavilion would require ADA uh, ADA access, and so it's not just simply about that that pavilion. Although that pavilion is in is in dire need of some attention. It's also that if we want to do anything like a like like a, a, a you know certainly an access ramp for DPW and access to get down there, but but sometimes it's also like like building a building any sort of 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 uh, amenities there. The splash park was not affected by it because it was ADA access. But if there's anything that connects the pavilion to the upper fields or the splash park or the playground, then then uh, it has to be ADA compliant in order for us to 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 do work there. Um, any sense of what the ask is going to be for that? Just out of curiosity. Um, we haven't worked through numbers on all of these, but I think that one we're looking on the order of maybe like a hundred thousand for the the permitting and design of that, okay. um, and that should give us a better um, cost estimate for next year. So, okay. So, look, uh, I may have misunderstood. So, looking, that's something a priority, but you don't think you're going to bring it forward for this year's CPA, or you do? I think we're going to bring it forward for CPA this year for the design and permitting. Oh, God. All right. And All right. then we would look at an FY, what, one more year out? Is it 27 already? Um, FY 27 ask would be for the construction dollars. Once we have permit, you know, the permitting hurdle, because we don't know how that'll change the design. So um, we'll know those numbers better. Um, okay. So that's kind of a two-year path on that one. All right. Um, I guess, why don't you go through your list and then, I mean, obviously folks, yeah. if you have any questions, interrupt, but otherwise keep rocking. Okay. Um, the, the next one is kind of a, uh, it's, it's not an exciting project. I'll just put that one out there. Um, we have a bunch of kiosks that got, that we have at several of our parks and several of our recreation facilities. Um, not all of them have it. Um, if you notice there, there's nothing on any of those kiosks. Um, we don't have any, we don't have the posted rules of the parks posted at most of the locations. Um, and so that that's one of those things that's just been on our to-do list for a while is trying to um, have something that lists out the rules so that everyone knows what the rules are. But then, you know, it's also an opportunity to have history of some of these sites or, um, you know, a map of the site, you know, like to have like a little bit of the kind of interpretive trail sort of aspects. Um, so is it, is it it's just putting content into existing kiosks or is it replacing kiosks with new items that have content? I don't think we need new kiosks. Several okay. of those kiosks were actually, I think they were either ARPA funded or I think a lot of them showed up either right around um, the COVID time period, but not every single park got one. You know, I know we have a couple at Groff. I know we have one down at Plum Brook. Um, I don't know if we have one at Mill River. Um, so there might be a couple of locations that need kiosks or kind of a home for this sort of thing. And then it would be, it sounds like um, the planning department has worked with a designer. And so they kind of have designs and templates for a lot of this stuff. So it's simply getting the information, you know, getting a couple of kiosks for the sites that don't have them yet, and then getting the information together and stylized to the town of Amherst or whatever they do and getting them, you know, manufactured so that we have something other than my department can laminate the heck out of something, but it's not going to look pretty. Um, so having something that looks a little nicer. All right. Any, any sense on costs for that? 
I don't know. Dave put the number of uh, 100 to 200 grand on that one. Um, but that was the that was the rough cost without us looking at how many sites need them. So I think there's going to be some sharpening of the pencil on that one. Okay, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm just reading what he he emailed. I don't know. <laughs> right. Um, okay. All right. That's uh, I guess number two or three, depending on how we're counting. Yeah, depending on how you look at that. Um, okay. There's one that I need to I need to explore a little bit bit more with my staff, but there I know there's been a push for getting electrical like either upsizing, replacing, or um, firming up the electrical that goes back to the baseball fields in Mill River. Um, right now, as I understand it, they have enough, of, they have like one power outlet that they can run a ball machine on and that's it. Um, that was kind of a offhanded comment by Dave. So I don't know the full, Ray, I don't know if you know if that the intent is to have lights out there and that's the electrical draw that he wants or if it's more for like electric scoreboards or just kind of other electrical needs like that do you know the the know. scope of that one i don't know okay Th like... that one was an email and so we haven't had a conversation to even understand what the need was okay all right and then the the last one that uh at least right now we're kicking around is um Again, like a lot of our recreation facilities, just, you know, benches, trash receptacles, tables, a lot of the kind of amenities at these facilities, we haven't done a kind of replacement. I know all of these are more housekeeping things. It's not any really exciting projects, um, but just kind of looking at rec, um, like it's not maintenance, but just kind of replacement of several of the um amenities that we have at the parks that need it. Okay. So. I haven't been on C the CPAC for a little while. Is that maintenance? Like I I have been told how to word that one. Um, but they're all items that are, you know, permanent. They are bolted to the ground because I've heard that, you know, if it's something that isn't, it's not eligible. But if they're items that are bolted to the ground, um and they're supporting recreation, whether it's benches that people sit on when they're watching a uh, baseball game or, you know, trash receptacles so they can actually pick up after themselves. Um, I've heard that's eligible. Okay. So. Well, I know it'll be vetted. Um, you know what I didn't hear in that list? Go for it. Anything about pickleball. I know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I know exactly. I'm like, I have my do not talk about, but you're welcome to bring them up and then I will fill you in. Um, so uh, honestly, I mean, the town, the town wants pickleball. We all know that there has been some siting issues and we just haven't made the progress that we needed to, to have a sound study done and to be able to fully explore um, a permanent home. And it's why we don't want to rush it and go to CPA without a home and without answers to that. And so we are still going through that process. Um, we are actively looking. This is something that we really do want to solve. We're just not in a place where we can bring something forward, unfortunately, this year. I guess, could doing this study be funded with CPA dollars? So like we're actually looking, if you recall, I want to say it was maybe FY22, there was some CPA funds for pickleball and what, you know, those funds have sat there for several years. We haven't really done much with it. And we're sometimes looking at using that towards the sound study. So, um, so that, um, so that hasn't been used that could be used for the sound study. Yes. Yeah. Is there any reason why we wouldn't do that now or what? That, I guess what we, we all, I mean, we will be this fall. We just haven't gotten there yet. So, so using, uh, if I hear your question right, using the using the, uh, the the granted money in place to conduct the count to, to, to conduct the sound studies on the sites that could be used, uh, that that is very much an approach. It's not new. It's not a new request, but it is a chance to try and apply the the old granted money as a way of getting direction for the for that that uh, search. 
Okay. Yeah, I don't remember what the exact circum what what the conditions were for that. Yeah, uh, Matt, thank you. Um, well, I'm just wondering whether pickleball is uh, adapting at all with these quiet pickleballs. Whether the standards are changing. So you're the same. Because if the, if the standards change, then the the requirements are different. Are you saying it might be premature yes. to? To invest in a study is that what you're suggesting matt uh no i think i hear you saying that the standards of distancing for the for the sites might change if people have new technology that is that that is less noise. yeah if, if, i don't well i don't know I, I mean the whole reason we got into this is because we looked around and other parts of the country were putting in place um rules about siding for pickleball courts mm -hmm. based on the sound now if 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 now pickleball obviously has taken notice of that and if there comes I, i'm just wondering if somewhere else in the country is, is is dealing with this i mean it's at least worth looking into um it's been like a year since usa pickleball announced quiet pickleballs um so i don't know what impact that has had in terms of being able to place pickleball courts closer to, or well, I don't know if 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 people have been able to enforce. You can only use quiet pickleballs at a site. That's one question. Yeah. Um, whether whether that has happened because obviously a lot of these pickleball courts already were put in places that were way too close to residential houses. So whether whether any anything has changed there, um, and then whether that impacts. The sound requirements. I, I think, I mean, Matt, one of the like basic, I, I like what you just said, because the reality is um, it's great that the technology is changing, but I also think there's, there's so, there's such a, maybe a fear factor on our part <laughs> that we don't want to get sued. And certainly there are examples across the country of people, you know, all sorts of legal action with citing them that, I think unless there's an entire industry change, you don't know if someone's going to use the quiet ball or I believe there's quiet paddles now too, you know, but who knows if people are using them or not. So we we have to, at least for now, assume that people aren't going to be using those until that's the, you know, the only thing that's available and, and keep that in mind with the neighbors um, mm. and as we're citing it. I mean, one thing that I'll say did come up with, you know, Mill River as people were talking about, you know, Mill River and yes, the neighbors haven't complained about using pickleball at the tennis courts. But when we specifically asked them, what well, could we do? Can we do pickleball here then? There was hesitation. They didn't want to sign off and say, yes, they're okay with a temporary home where they can pull the plug at any time, but they were not okay to sign off with this being a permanent home for it. So even though they haven't actively complained they also didn't give consent for pickleball to be there probably because they're hearing all of the news and all the chatter that's out there um so certainly the town wants to be mindful if we're going to invest you know half a million dollars or whatever ultimately it ends up costing we want to make sure that we find a home that is is going to be a long-term home so do so so do we use the money and do a essentially worst case study assuming everybody's using traditional paddles and traditional loud balls, or do we wait for some of the technology to change and then do the study? I mean, I, I, I wonder if you can kind of run a couple of different scenarios well, that's, and, and that's under, more what I was, yeah, right. I mean, I, I would probably rely on the experts a little more than my understanding of, of what the right scenario is, but it seems to make sense to kind of test out both scenarios and, and have that information while we're also seeing um, the industry change. Yeah, I mean, I we should do that. Yeah, I mean, the money's here. Like, we should do that. We we we're. I think the pickleballers are the only ones who show up at our meetings, and yeah, it is a huge growing sport. We've got money that's sort of sitting in the coffers right now, and we don't have a a good mechanism of spending it. It seems like let's just get that going right now and do the do the range. This is a worst case. This is right. a, a current best case. And then we can size our risk based off of that. That's, that's the plan. Okay. That, that is, so 
I is mean, that, our, yes, that, our plan that, is to that, use okay. those old CPA funds to do a sound study to start to evaluate it. And I and I appreciate all the feedback that we've gotten in terms of running a couple of different scenarios um, to to fully understand the the range. Yeah. OK. It's and is of, that I think it's kind of Matt's question here, but uh, uh, the reality is in, in an open in an open park. Uh, we don't have the control of of what equipment you use when you come to the space. If we were charging admission to a space that, that we have somebody set up on, if you have attendance and and you have memberships in, and we could certainly say you're using a certain type of equipment for a park that is technically open, it's te technically accessed all day. We uh, any sound size we 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 commit ourselves to have to be mindful of people who aren't using that equipment. And so, That's, yes, yeah. I think you, we should be trying to look at what the standards are and what the standards move towards or providing people with the, with the softer, more amenable uh, equipment or finding ways to discourage the, 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 uh, the, the, the obnoxious uh, elements of pickleball that have run other towns' efforts into the ground. Um, we should be looking to try to incentivize that 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 uh, that behavior, but until we have control, until we have attendance, until we have somebody who's there to to manage that, we have to take into account. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think we, I think everybody agrees with with you, Ray. I, I, I'm just wondering again if that study could be set to do both, and then sort of what's our forcing mechanism? What's making us like? What does it take for us to actually start this study as opposed to just saying we will start it and contemplating? Um, Matt. Well, I was just, I just did a quick search for five minutes and it's, I couldn't find a whole lot of ability to, like as Ray said or and Amy said, I couldn't find sites having a whole lot of ability to try and enforce quite pickleball. I think they still have to design for uh, people to show up with loud pickleball. Yeah, but I think that's still fine, right? If we we do the study that tells us that's the worst case scenario, then at least we know we can't do this site today no. because of the the original technology. But it, I, I'm not sure that we are able to definitively say that in any situation. Now, when we're looking at at Stanley Street, um, you know, there's some residents who had cited some numbers, which were kind of the only numbers we had to look at. Right. It would be it would be great for us to actually use that money, get the study, have some actual facts. Um, again, it can it'll help us size the risk. It doesn't necessarily mean we can put something in and we know we can't control what people use, but at least it gives us information to be able to move quickly. And again, the money's been sitting there. So, I mean, I'd, I'd love it if we could just get that scheduled and get it started. I, I'm not sure what what else we'd wait for at this point. It's on the list. Um, <laughs> I got nothing else going on, Andy. Don't worry. Um, okay. No, I, I I will say I do. You know, in to Matt's point about you know the fact that there is this technology with quieter balls and quieter paddles. I will say, I at least appreciate the fact that the pickleball community in general seems like the sort of group that like they don't want to be disturbing as well. And the much as we can't enforce it, I feel like this community in Amherst is so motivated to have a permanent home that they're going to do everything they can to try to be as minimal of an impact. Um, and, and I appreciate that, that um, I don't think people are going to, you know, unless that's the only thing they have, they're not necessarily going to come with, you know, the loud balls and the loud um paddles and everything and, and not really care about the impact on others. Um, they really seem to be so motivated to um, to have a home and to do what they can to make it a permanent home. It is definitely in their interests. Yeah. All right. So it's on your list. When, when, when do we start the study? How did it get from your list to actually doing something? TBA. Yeah. T TBD. I'll, right. I'll tell you what, if everybody does their uh, service line inventories and gets that project off my list, then I'll have more bandwidth to do this. So Okay. Okay. No, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot. I just want to, you know, the way the nature of our, our meetings, it's 
you know, it's hard to sometimes get things actually done and build momentum. So fair enough. Uh, I get it. We'll just, you know, let's make sure, Ray, that we've got this on the agenda uh, in subsequent months, not not to put you in a tough spot, oh, Amy, so. but just to, you know, we need a forcing mechanism to make things happen sometimes. So, so yeah, sounds like no, understand. Uh, point point at me, don't point at Amy. Uh, but but I I I uh, uh, you know I think we've got a task for my commission to uh, follow up with me on. So yeah, okay, all right. I, all that I take Amy take it all back and throw on it at Ray. So you're, <laughs> yeah. you're good. You're up the hook. Well, and, and I mean Ray, maybe you can also. And I'll put it on Amy. <laughs> you, if the commission is giving you pressure, then maybe that can help you kind of move it forward a little sooner too. To be like, I have to report to the commission next month. They want to see results on this. Um, you know, to kind of help move it forward. So. Deep down, that's that's kind of what I meant there when I said Andy put it on me. Yep. All right, Chris. Uh, can can I, yep. Yep. Can you sure. hear me now? Yep. So I just I asked a question because I was invited to play pickleball at Hampshire College. You can oh. play at Hampshire College with a member of the tennis court and it's five bucks. So just a little there are, other, you know, not the. So, yeah, Amy, I will. And I, I will. I will share that the. um the idea of trying to talk to Hampshire College and work something out with Hampshire College has been a, a part of our conversation as well, you know, both as a short term and potentially a long term solution. Um, I mean, I would I would say the best thing that people can do is put pressure on the town manager to have that conversation, um, because certainly that's something that we have wanted to do, um, but we haven't. It, it's not our place to have even some of those negotiations um, or those higher level conversations. But I, I think that that's something um, that the the pickleball community or the the rec commission could um, maybe maybe apply a little bit of pressure or have a conversation and see if that could move forward. Okay. Yeah. Good. Ray, can you put that on our list also? Yes, sir. All right. Um, anything else CPA wise? I know we're, we're going a little long here. That was my list, but certainly if anybody has any questions or feedback or, you know, or other projects that um, that they're interested in us talking about or considering, um, I certainly would welcome that. So, so Matt, Jonas, Chris, on kind of on the spot here, any, any items you'd like to bring up? If not, I would say give it some thought over the next week. I mean, weeks like all all we can afford right because yeah if we come up with an idea amy and ray will need to put something together or at least you know they will need time if they decide to put something together so um if nothing to share now again give it some thought and let's send email over to ray okay all right that sounds good uh amy and ray that sounds great cool. all right thank you um right. let's see uh looks like Denise, we're finally up to you. You've been sitting here patiently. No worries. Um, I actually think I can maybe be a little bit of a bridge um, into aquatics, but um, aside from the middle school pool, during the indoor pool season, the other pool that I rent is at Hampshire College. So the town is currently already has a financial relationship, contractual relationship, um, thanks to my need for... <laughs> precious pool time. Um, they do have a new facilities person who um, had a long time um, re uh, professional relationship with Brad King there and they do have someone new in but I can't imagine that they wouldn't be willing to chat with you all um, if it comes to that uh, in terms of the pickleball, pickleball courts um, and accessibility of those outdoor the, those outdoor um, tennis courts are generally empty when I drive by. So it's certainly, it's, our, it's already an established relationship between the town and Hampshire. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, so Ray, are you okay if I share my screen? All right. Set it up right now. I will be, I, I okay. just had to bring some pictures of my swimmers and my lifeguards for you all. Um, Cause I, at least, I think it's been like a year and a half since I presented to the commission. 
Um, Ray and I, I'm starting my second full year here. And so I've been able to kind of dig into some of the health and wellness of the aquatics program. And I brought some numbers for you all today. I'll be fast because I know that we are uh, running, running late here. Let's see. All right. And hopefully you guys can see all this and I might leave it on. There we go. So I've been sitting down, I have to kind of prepare some of this anyway for Ray in terms of thinking through where we've been and where we are right now as a department. And I, are you still there? Ray, yes. can you hear me? Yes. Okay. My, my screen went black and I'm going to have to not present that way. Um, so I'm, I've been taking a look back, thinking through uh, and using 2019 as being our baseline of the last really normal year where we, we think about community activities, um, having really taken a deep pause in some, in some creative ways that we did do group activities between 2020 and 2022. But at least as a parent of uh, two kids, I know that up until this past summer, um, I don't think that I've that our household has been participating in the normal way. So I really look back um, at 2019 as being the last time that I can think about aquatics programming as being quote unquote normal year. Um, so we've had some good growth. Uh, 2023 was my first summer uh, with the department and happily um, we've got some good healthy, um, financial numbers, which are the kind of rough sketch of the folks that are currently um, actively uh, participating in aquatics programming in Amherst. Um, I had to bring you guys a picture of my, my lifeguards. Uh, I, we employed um, 40 um, young folks, some of them um, members of Amherst High School, some UMass students, and um, Hadley Hadley lifeguards as well. Um, and also Amy, I just have to shout out to you and your staff because none of the work that we do at either pool um, could we do without you and all the support that you give our folks. Um, and it was an incredibly successful year. We, we opened early because I had such a strong um, returning group of college students in, in mid-May. They were, many of them were home. Um, so we were able and scheduled to open Mill River um, on June 8th, as opposed to the June 23rd that I opened in 2023, um, which is at, at that juncture is when I get all of my high school um, lifeguards. We typically are kind of unable to open or don't really wanna open War Memorial uh, early while the high school is still in session anyway, but with that heat wave, um, we uh, with DPW juggled and got War Memorial up and running <clears throat> so that um, it too could be a uh, cooling center for the town. And uh, it definitely impacted uh, the revenue for the pools and the aquatics program throughout the summer. So some of these bumps that um, the daily revenue of passes and concessions. So these are folks that don't sign up for a summer membership. Um, I would venture to say that this green column here, um, that bump is really due to the weather and the fact that we had a longer season this year. Um, the bread and butter of my job um, happily is with uh, the little guys um, getting and trying to have, um, you know, a water safe community and, and a group of um, a whole community that knows how to swim. Um, learning loss was real for swim lessons of all crazy things. Um, folks in 2021, 2022 were not taking their kids to group swim lessons. Um, last fall, I had more families who would come in and they'd, they'd feel embarrassed. Like my 11 year old doesn't truly know how to swim, even though they can, you know, stand anywhere in the shallow end because they hadn't had that same pattern of lesson um, curriculum that my 16 year old did, for example. So I think that we've seen some strong growth here. We are, um, there are other uh, organizations that provide youth 
swim lessons in the area. And I think that we are holding our own. Um, so again, using 2019 as my base uh, scale and then looking to see how we're doing based on the revenue that we're bringing in for um, the programming. Um, for example, this summer we, we taught um, a thousand a uh, thousand swim lessons. Um, uh, happily, a uh, hundred of those were uh, scholarship, fully funded, <clears throat> ARPA funded um, free lessons to um, children in need um, who otherwise, some of them were not on our radar as ever having participated in any rec activities. Um, so that outreach with that scholarship program was really, really wonderful. Uh, hopefully we'll catch those kids and keep them coming back to swim lessons. Um, aside from the about $5,000 of scholarship money that we used, um, we also provided uh, just under $7,000 in um, free and reduced swim lessons as well as a department. So we're really proud of that. Um, I also launched in the past and from a year ago uh, till today, thinking about adult programming, I've launched adult swim lessons, which is pretty incredible. Um, this is for folks who um, either truly have, aren't, have never learned how to swim, um, either had not, not had access to pools where they uh, grew up, um, some international folks um, where swimming is um, approached in, in a different way, um, all the way to folks who are working on um, trying to incorporate swimming into their exercise regime uh, later in life. Uh, it's pretty good sport. And so I've seen the revenue growth there as well, which is really fun. So we'll be back at it with uh, adult lessons this fall. And then as Ray can attest, I do tend to end up with some extracurricular activities in my role. So whereas the other, the lessons programming is really the heart of um, my job as coordinator, um, but I keep adding new uh, new new projects along the way, which is how we ended up at Hampshire College, for example. Um, but the way that I came into this role was as a coach um, and wanting to start a recreational level uh, youth swim team and the growth that was, I came to Ray in spring of 2022, which was really fun. And so we've seen great growth there with Amherst United um, and some familiar faces to Ray, I thought I'd bring those guys up so we had a, we've had a really successful team and um the nice thing about the rec level as opposed to some of the other um levels of swimming um is that you know we're we're really flexible we do provide about 10 months of training to the kids but we built we've built it to be really attentive to their mental health really supportive of other um, sports activities, arts activities, social life, um, rather than getting too serious, um, too serious about any one particular sport. Swimming can can draw kids in and not let them go. So we're trying to be really attentive to all their needs. And I am almost done. Um, so more extracurriculars. Uh, the master's team, um, which is both master's coached swimming and lap swimming, that is uh, where we are at Hampshire College. Um, that relationship is strong. The pool is beautiful. Uh, location is not as great as uh, what we experience, obviously, with the middle school pool, but it takes a little bit of strain off of um, putting all of our programming in the middle school pool. I do, every pool is, um, like its own organism, and and I I worry um, I worry. So any any pool is a precious place, which of course brings us a little bit into some of our war memorial conversations from the summer. Um, we also ran a stroke and turn clinic, and then outside team rentals, um, which were great um, in terms of building relationships with other other organizations and other groups of swimmers in Amherst. And then the last piece that I'll just share briefly tonight, which some of you um, may have read about or heard a little bit about that I'm really proud of. Um, and much of this is thanks to um, the work, the partnership with our outreach uh, director in our office, who's worked at applying um, the ARPA funds that um, we're really lucky to have had and aquatics has benefited in meaningful ways um, in ways that have already impacted 
the work that I can do, but also the people that can be in the pool. Um, and we really saw the culmination of that this summer with um, the launch of adaptive swim lessons. Uh, we taught 47 lessons to 25 swimmers over a seven week period. It was pretty powerful and, and really impactful. Um, right now I'm working on bringing back my staff numbers to where they were in the summer. Most of my really superb adaptive uh, instructors are off to college now. So we're, we're combing, combing the area for those next replacements. Um, we are planning to do adaptive open and lap swim uh, the hour before we typically have open and lap swim on Sundays. So we're building in time periods where um, it's just super inclusive, uh, where all of the adaptive ARPA funded equipment can be used, where families whose kids participate in the pool in ways that they um, don't feel as, as comfortable and open at of sharing their children um, in the pool with a uh, with the public, this is space for them to come and play. And one of the best ways to learn how to swim is just to spend time in a pool. Um, so all of this is folded in really profoundly. Not only, sorry for my family in the background. Um, not only do I think we've already been able to have an impact on some of the kids' lives who otherwise wouldn't have access to swim lessons, but I can, I think I can speak safely saying that my instructors were, um, they, they glowed at the end of those lessons in a way that was really powerful. So um, none of that could have been done without the ARPA funding, um, the Culture City trainings, which um, you know some of you may have heard a little bit about from Becky. Um, additionally, in terms of access, uh, the um, investment in the ADA stairs that are currently located at War and Mill River, um, and then chairlifts that are critical uh, to making sure that, that anybody of any ability can um, participate in a pool um, the way that our outdoor pools are structured. So um, those pieces are in effect at Hampshire College and at the middle school pool, but to, to really be able to open the open Mill River and War Memorial up to everybody, we needed those investments and they happened. So we're really excited about that. So, and again, Amy, back to your staff, thank, thank them for uh, helping us get everything all set. I know that, I know the chairlifts, I think there might be, um, that may not launch fully until next summer's opening, but um, the stairs were a super big help. So that is all I've got. Nice. And I will Thank say, you. even though the, the pickleball folks are the ones who come to your meetings, if we need at any juncture, I can launch the aquatics people <laughs> to be coming to your meetings too. In, in July, they, when the news was all worrying about War Memorial and whatnot, they were like, do you need us? Do you need us to write a petition? Do you need us to go to a meeting? And I was like, you know, we weren't there yet, but they're, they're ready to go for sure. <laughs> it sounds like it. You've got some yeah. enthusiasm over there. Well, hey, um, so just gang we're we're gonna punt on the youth empowerment programming till next meeting so um like if you're worried about holding questions back because you don't want this thing to go till nine o'clock we took stuff Sorry. off the agenda so we can you know <laughs> share questions i i had a couple real quick i didn't um so relative to what you presented is sort of every bar on those bar charts essentially a different program that we offer and then at, like so I'm not sure what master's was. I was oh, also sure. curious, like the adaptive swimming, like, uh, well, anyway, so, so that was. Yeah, kind yeah. Of no problem. So um, down here, these are three unique, per, well, the outside team rentals is more about just building community relationships. The master's uh, program, that is a unique program that I launched um, back probably now this was the start of the second year with that. So that's the Hampshire College Adult uh, Lap and Masters Swimming. Um, the Stroke and Turn Clinics, those are youth uh, spring, it's a spring program that we run in, in between the normal um, swim seasons. Uh, United Rec Team, that is a standalone program. Um, swimming is a quirky, quirky sport in that every swimmer's Feel like we need to be in the water all the time year round um 
Ideally, it benefits the other sports that they do. Um, and then swim lessons for adults are offered um, side by side with our youth lessons, uh, our neurotypical youth lessons um, that are ongoing and have been ongoing. So I just happen to have a data point where I can look back on the data points from years past prior to when I was here um, in terms of the financial health of, of the aquatics program. So, okay. So Andy, another, you meant, sorry, Andy, you mentioned masters, particularly I can do my best to oversimplify and explain masters to you. I'm an expert swimmer. I'm an adult. And <laughs> I've decided, I've decided that one of the things that I want to do in my in my own personal development is I want to go and find somebody like Denise, who's a coach and an expert, and she can give me basically coaching as an adult and a, and a scheduled program for me to get even better and to keep myself competitive and keep myself in shape and really try and achieve goals as an adult swimmer. Okay. I'm fantastic. Right. And so I'm in the program. I'm going to give you swim lessons, Ray. You're going to Thank learn you. how to swim. Thank, Thank you. Um, yeah. So one lane, of, one lane of four or five people would be swimming the same practice that I would provide for them. And then the next lane over would swim a different practice. So it's kind of a group, a group activity in an individual sport. Okay. And then the other, the other questions, or maybe it's more than one question. We'll see. Was just the revenue charts. They all showed significant growth, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, is that because you're here, right? And you're driving this. Do you feel like um, we're going to continue to grow like that? Or are you like, are you resource constrained? You know, you've got, you're at a point now where, where there's nothing else you can, you can't generate more money because you couldn't offer more lessons. So a right. question like, Ray, do we need more resources? And then yeah, I don't, I have no idea what, um, what the expense side of this equation looks like. So some great revenue right. there, Ray, are we... Is this like a profitable part of Amherst Rec? Um, so I think, go ahead, Denise. well, I was gonna say, I do think I'll, I, I would expect not to see much more growth on, um, on the numbers or revenue of the youth swim team. And in terms of my cap on youth lessons, I probably am approaching that were I not to diversify my um, staff structure. So right mm -hmm. now I rely heavily on, um, at, you, you know, high school athletes uh, tend to be lifeguards and swim instructors and they're in, they're already in their sports season. I have a hard time running programming in the evenings, which is when the middle school pool is available currently. Um, and then the, la the last piece, even if I did have staff, I would need a third pool, an indoor third pool to run in the evenings because okay. right now the swim team and the, then the high school swim team are in at the middle school. Um, and Hampshire College isn't an option due to their, their other rental needs. Makes so, um, okay. you know, the long-term goal for me I have the relationship with Hampshire College. I am hoping to get my foot in the door. I've got real close this summer with Amherst College. Um, their pool, their swim team has a 19 week season. Um, so in the late spring through the summer, that's a relationship I could build and, a, and another pool that I could, could access, but it wouldn't be around due to their needs. So um, that's but another. If you, more, if you had more pools, you could maybe grow this, maybe get ready to help coach a little bit since he's an expert swimmer. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, oh, that's, that's a fantastic story. Yeah. Um, Jonas, Matt, Chris, any questions, comments for Denise? I don't have any, but that's great. All right, yeah, no, it's a, it's a great update, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Well, thanks for sticking around for an hour and a half. Hope it was worth it for you. Thank you, everybody. Um, I put on the on the uh, invitation tentative date again. I pick, I pick the date. You guys can feel free to to uh, uh, accept that or propose something different. But I did put a tentative October fourteenth, which is the second Monday in October. I will, yeah. Let, I will definitely reply back to that. I've got, um, I've got a biweekly Monday thing, so I, I'd love it to land it on that off week. So. Um, 
I'll take a look. And the 14th, is that the Indigenous Peoples Day also? Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. I will uh we'll find out a different date. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, uh, Andy, uh, you can... I won't be available between October 9th and November 9th. Oh really? Bring us to I'll, 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 I'll be I'll be I'll be out of the out of the country. I had a, that's that people don't go away for two months. One month like their vacation. One, one month. One month. Oh yeah. All right. You, yes. Okay. I know what to count. Well, all right. Then maybe I, we. Do I'm unavailable the month the first Monday. I know that I'm going to be unavailable that seventh. Um, um, but we could also find a different day of the week if you guys want to take a look at that. Uh, possibly too. I guess Matt. Um, will that? Are you good on C CPA? Or do we need uh, maybe a, not, should, like, we exactly. should try and find a date when Matt's going to be there for CPA when 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 yeah I, I don't know when the CPA meetings are going to start uh, they, yeah. they haven't posted their schedule um, okay and it might be a problem actually maybe we I, maybe I, we I didn't I didn't think about that um okay well maybe we can get a backup just in case and uh, as the schedule allows were, were there a, I wasn't on last call was did anybody else have interest or um to maybe serve as a backup i guess we only have two of you on um two two other folks but jonas or chris either of you have an interest if if matt's not available to make sure we've got some rec committee representation yeah I'd, if i got a good uh grounding a good primer from matt on uh okay yeah I could... All right, you can you can be our backup, and I guess Matt, okay. let I'll us know. To, yeah, I'll have to. Well, I'll, I'll check in with Town Hall, and I'll talk to Matt about his schedule and see if we can't get information to him about about what those expectations are. That works. That's, I think that's uh, uh, you know, certainly if we need to if we need to have a pinch hitter, we can talk about. Uh, so last year the. The, the presentations didn't begin until November. Oh, all right then. Yeah, I couldn't remember if it was October, or November. So we will probably be fine then. Yeah. Oops. You going to Australia by any chance, Matt? No, I'm going to Europe. Yeah. Oh, too bad. Let's say Australia is 14 hours ahead or something like that. So that'd be it's perfect. Like, you could still dial in. Australia's further. Yeah. Well, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I probably won't have a good bandwidth. On the 14th, I won't have. I'll be. I won't have any access. Enjoy. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll so we'll figure out our next meeting time just via email. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Any new business, old business, Ray? No. All right. I think we're good to adjourn then, everybody. Thanks for uh, flexibility meeting on a Thursday. Um. And uh, yeah, enjoy the beautiful. It's going to be amazing this weekend. I think so. Enjoy it and. We'll see you all next time. All right. Everybody have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Thanks, Brett.